All right. Good morning. We are live and all set. So happy Wednesday to everybody. Y'all caught me making a few adjustments on the live stream, but overall we are all set. So my name is Jared. This is Engineering the Markets. It is November 17th, 2021. Let's go ahead and take a look at where we are this week. And as always, just kind of looking back at where we started uh, with the SPX expected move. Ultimately, the market hasn't really been exceptionally volatile this week. Uh, we've only been through two sessions so far. And while we are at an all time high test, we've basically pulled back from last week's session. We're back near those all time highs, basically near that resistance point, which is an untested high. Uh, as of uh, before yesterday's session and looking to see whether the market wants to continue to advance or if we're going to see maybe a slightly deeper pullback in the next couple of days. Now we have our expected move continued to be marked at 46.22 to the downside, 47.43 to the upside. And remember, we're just basing that on where the option market deemed risk at the beginning of the week based on the SPX close from last week. So overall, nothing really of note on this side of the fence. And as we shift back into our SPY, we just want to note that yesterday we got exceptionally close to that all time high. And if we dig in a little deeper, we can start to see that the highest open of the market was approximately 469.7. We started to breach these sort of upper ranges, these isolated pivots from a more technical sense. And these pivots so far have been holding, but what we're not seeing yet is a strong enough selling response to indicate that this is going to be a double top. And why would I go ahead and say that at this time? Well, first and foremost, we haven't really changed any shorter term trends. If you look at something like a 30 minute or an hourly chart, if there was stronger selling on yesterday's session, you certainly would like to see this sort of hourly uptrend that we have currently be broken. And while that can occur today, ultimately that has not been the technical picture as of yet. So therefore we want to stick with what is the more probabilistic scenario. And that is of course the daily uptrend continuing on its upward momentum. Additionally, as we looked at yesterday's session, we brought up volume profile and the idea that on yesterday's session, there really wasn't a bias moving into the market. Over the past 10 days, we've established a high and a low sort of intra day type range. This is based on the previous weekly pullback. And that range has established a value zone, approximately 466. 0.5 as of yesterday's session that has moved slightly higher based on yesterday's activity. So when you're looking at a market that has a predetermined range, whether you're coming from an untested high, an untested low, or just a previous zone that the market has been in prior and is revisiting for some back testing, you often want to look at where the highest value sits. And with this approach, you can understand that if the market does wish to move forward, you're moving forward from a high value zone, i.e. you may not want to fight that trend or that advance away from value because you're moving from an area of high balance and interest and the move away can be deemed range expansion. So yesterday with the more neutral bias, we did see the market advance higher. And that was, of course, seen in the SPY, in the NASDAQ, which did have a little bit of a weaker open, but ultimately recovered and started to climb near that 400 print in the QQQ ETF. And then finally, the IWM, which is actually one of the weaker sort of intraday indices, uh, scraping more towards the pullback lows and ultimately seeing a little bit of a pull down away from VPOC in this morning session. So some interesting rotation going on. And what's even more interesting I find is the dynamic 
of the NASDAQ in relation to the bond market. We all know that the NASDAQ stocks tend to like an environment where the bond market is rising. And this has not been the case over the past couple of sessions. We've actually seen a pretty steep correction inside of a product like TLT. And that has been met with, of course, rising interest rates. Something like the TNX, the FVX for five year interest rates, all climbing to either relative highs, new highs, or even our longer 30 year treasury bonds coming above 2.0. Um, as of yesterday's session. So <clears throat> all these things put together, it's an interesting metric to see that tech is still a very dominant force in the marketplace at this time. All we have to do is look at XLK and see that we did make a new all-time high on yesterday's session. Not only that, but we actually closed at a new high, an indication that we might be accepting the previous pullback range and looking to advance further and explore range expansion to the top side. So, of course, what stocks are leading this charge? <clears throat> well, it's worth mentioning that Microsoft also made a new all-time high. I believe it also closed at a new high, although it did not close at the high. Just confirm that really quickly, it sure did. So Microsoft making new highs. This is also coming into its dividend uh, payout as of today. So there might be some price adjustment based on that small 62 cent per share dividend adjustment. We also note that while Apple is another main component, Apple really hasn't been moving as of late. So there's been sort of an interesting lack of participation in some of our notable names in the tech sector. I've gone ahead and marked that 150 area and I've deemed it what's called gravity. A lot of people like to think of it more as volume point of control. That is of course a more dynamic uh, nature and oftentimes the VPOC is not necessarily going to be a psychological price level. Whereas in the option market, as we've seen with certain things like Friday uh, option expiration, option pinning type strategies, and the concept of what's called maximum pain, Apple tends to gravitate towards this 150 print on intraday sessions. And it can lead to some very choppy price action when evaluating it through the daily chart. I mean, all it takes is a look at the past couple of weeks and a shift into a weekly chart will confirm this, that Apple really hasn't been moving. We've essentially been flat, trapped between about a three to $5 range from high to low. And of course that 150 being sort of our central pivot point. So an interesting dynamic that tech continues to rise along with the bond market continuing to uh, correct or basically fall off. So, what else has been leading the charge? Why would we think that the market can continue to advance? And why has there not really been any sort of stronger selling pressure? Well, one of our main sectors, tech, is at all time highs. So that's sort of point one for the bulls. We also have healthcare, another major sector in the S&Ps. That has not only broken out, we've seen that September to October correction, actually pulling healthcare down quite precipitously. But this has been in a new breakout sort of period. And we now have our 20 period starting to catch up to our price. So we certainly wanna see this come off if we're looking bearish in the market, but that has not been the case. This has been at the current time, a bit consolidated or at the very least a bit range bound. What else dictates SPY volatility? Well, financials are a key sector to always keep in mind. And they're sort of counter, oftentimes counter the tech sector in regards to the bond correlation. Now, financials, once again, really hasn't been moving anywhere. In fact, we're looking to see if this sort of shorter term trend line is gonna hold on an ETF like XLF. 
And yet the marketplace has not been seeing any advance nor decline as of late. And once again, this is in a rising interest rate environment. Once again, very odd to see that financials are not really participating in the bullish activity over the past couple of weeks. So big kind of question marks across the market. It seems as if tech dominance is really what's carrying this market forward. And you can see that in some of those key underlines. We certainly had Tesla lead some of that charge on its momentum breakout. That of course has been stalled at this time, but we are seeing some intraday volatility. We're seeing of course, Microsoft at new all time highs. And then another notable name, which is actually coming out with earnings this afternoon is NVIDIA. NVIDIA did not only make new all-time highs on its recent breakout, but we expanded the range quite, uh, I would say, uh, quickly or in, in a more advanced way. Um, once again, just noting that as we've topped in this market, at least in the short term, we're also putting in sort of that gravity look near the $300 print. These are ranges that as traders, we want to be a bit cautious of not because necessarily it's going to sell off from this price level, but because the volatility tends to be a bit muted. So if you're establishing long or short positions, you can often get whipsawed in these moments in time as there really is no advantage to the bulls or the bears near gravity. It's the same concept as VPOC. Market tends to be a bit neutral at these price levels Whereas some of your best opportunities to go short are near sort of these false breakouts or these overextensions. And then our best advantage to go long is when the pullbacks get a bit extreme, basically the oversold condition on an uptrending market. So as I mentioned, Nvidia just kind of showing this look over the past 10 days, bringing up volume profile to confirm that yes, 300 is VPOC. And yes, it can be very challenging to trade these stocks intraday when over the past couple of weeks, we're sitting right at value. And that can lead to some very choppy oscillations or just a lot of back and forth action with not a good risk or reward profile. So with NVIDIA, since we are headed into earnings, it can be worthwhile to look at the option expected move for the week. Keep in mind that while NVIDIA is reporting earnings this afternoon, the option market is putting the expected move for the Friday close. So a lot of that intra volatility or that IV expansion is going to be contained within the Friday series, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the stock will get all of that expected move volatility in the earnings announcement itself. Some of it actually comes a bit later once the market settles and especially into that Friday expiration. So a stock like NVIDIA, which closed at approximately 302 yesterday, is giving or showing about a $19 expected move. And that's based on Thinkorswim's algorithm for calculating the expected move. It's also based on a bit of aggregation of option volume and open interest across this entire series. Now, not all programs are going to show this expected move directly like this. They're not going to give you a nice format for it. So the question can be, how do you calculate this yourself? How do you find out this number if you're simply scanning for stocks that you wish to open option positions on? One of the easiest ways to do this is to wait for a stock to get close to a specific strike. For NVIDIA, we close at 302, so our 30250s are approximately at the money as of yesterday's close. And all we have to do is set up a simple straddle. If I attempt to buy the at the money, of course, this stock has moved in pre-market slightly, so these prices may be adjusted whenever the market opens. But all I have to do is price this at the money straddle and see that the market is deeming this to cost about 1750. Fairly close to that 1875, of course, 
not going to be one to one because these calculations are different. Another way to sort of smooth this out is to go one strike in the money and one strike out of the money, depending on which side of the chain you're looking on. And that would be something like trying to buy the 305s. That gives me a price of about 1770. And then of course I can buy the 300s, another 1750 price. So when it comes to the quote unquote at the money straddles, NVIDIA's expected move for the Friday series is approximately 1750. This platform is doing a little bit more aggregation of data showing about 1850. And with NVIDIA having two and a half dollar strikes, basically horseshoes, hand grenades and option strikes, you definitely want to kind of play with a bit of wider expectation as we've seen plenty of earnings sort of beat these expected moves and breach them on significant uh, beats or misses of earnings. So as always um, with earnings, you're obviously playing a bit of a bi-directional bet. A lot of people are looking at NVIDIA and maybe even looking at the reaction from AMD, which has been another strong semiconductor play and maybe thinking that this one is gonna once again have a bit of a bullish reaction. But keep in mind that the uprun in NVIDIA has been at the equivalent time frame of AMD's earnings reaction. And we have a lot of a headwind with NVIDIA and AMD with announcements from Facebook, now Meta or Metaverse coming out with some announcements of who's going to be some of the chosen uh, chip manufacturers and chip producers for uh, these advancements. So with all that said, when it comes to market volatility and maybe a little bit of a catalyst for tomorrow, we might want to be looking at what NVIDIA does for its earnings. Because when it comes to larger stocks, NVIDIA is throwing around about $750 billion of market cap. Essentially, it is coming up in the world and approaching that sort of $1 trillion market cap that a lot of companies strive for and which has been breached by Tesla in recent trading history. So NVIDIA's reaction can sort of set the stage for sort of the next leg of the market. We'll also want to be looking at any other earnings that might be of interest for the following week or for this week. And that's going to be some of our stocks, which have already reported as of this morning, the likes of Lowe's and Target. These are going to be some of our uh, consumer retail and the likes of Lowe's uh, affecting uh, very similar to HD, which has a very strong or had a very strong earnings reactions on yesterday's session, uh, essentially breaking out to new all time highs after a flat range bound trade over the past couple of weeks. So let's take a, what look, take a look at what Lowe's is doing in the morning session, actually seeing a breakout on yesterday's session, possibly sympathy compared to HD. And now that earnings are out and the conference call is coming up, we're seeing continuation at this time. So these charts are once again, sort of similar, if not uh, uh, repetitive in the way that they perform. Companies like to basically anticipate certain events and with the likes of HD and Lowe's, HD coming out on yesterday's session, we actually saw similar breakouts in Lowe's while their earnings had not been announced. So these are things we can of course take advantage of as traders. If you're not necessarily comfortable trading a stock like HD for whatever reason, maybe the spread is too wide, uh, you're not sure if that earnings reaction is a bit too overblown. You can be looking at stocks like Lowe's, which have had similar reactions intraday. And now with earnings out, they're looking at continuation. These are going to be ones to watch over the next couple of days as they're not necessarily the highest market cap names in consumer discretionary. But if I go to analyze and pull this out, you'll note that HD actually holds about eight or 9% of the XLY consumer discretionary ETF. 
lows coming in much lower, only about 3.75. But when you combine the two together, you're getting into those sort of market cap ranges that are equivalent to the likes of Tesla. Basically looking at HD and lows as one entity as opposed to individual stocks. So just something to note, these are bigger players that are coming out with earnings. They're sort of shaking the landscape. And in this case, the consumer discretionary landscape. And then of course, Target, which also came out by itself, not necessarily a big mover for this, um, for this ETF. But once again, we're looking at a heavy consumer discretionary earnings day, along with yesterday's session and earnings week for consumer discretionaries. So, Uh, of course, we have Cisco and NVIDIA coming out tonight. And then shift into our NASDAQ, if I can find it. Um, looks like Baidu came out this morning. I believe the reaction was a bit negative on Baidu's earnings. Uh, other names maybe not holding as much weight. NVIDIA, of course, in the NASDAQ 100 as well. And then some other names to focus on, maybe JD, another big sort of China e-commerce player. Rost, which is gonna be Rost Stores. This is another um, sort of shopping related um, company, something that has some significance and some previous data based on other earnings reactions. You might wanna be looking at companies like Walmart. Um, uh, let's see, companies like um, Nordstrom, and just any company that has similar business models to see what their reaction has been on earnings at this time. And I won't go over the rest. Uh, those are smaller companies, but basically we're getting towards, I would say the tail end of some of our larger market cap names for earnings. NVIDIA is definitely one of the bigger ones. Uh, definitely wanna keep it on watch. Okay, last but not least, we are in the midst of EV mania. Um, essentially, we've seen this before. We've been through this merry-go-round. Merry-go-rounds are circular in nature. So as the market likes to cycle, people get excited. People get manic for interesting companies and interesting IPOs, all related to a new sector. In this case, this is not new, but it is new um, leaders, new bullish uh, activity and new charts to evaluate. Now, I wanna bring up Rivian because we were seeing some signs this pre-market right before I hopped on that today might be a little bit of a different type of day for Rivian stock. Over the past five days, this has been a momentum trading stock to the upside very notable that this stock has been climbing, accepting previous day close on each and every session, essentially making higher highs and higher lows. And at no point was this really showing any signs of a short, albeit a lot of people understand that this is starting to get a bit fundamentally overblown. That's not really how the market works. That's not how supply and demand works. And ultimately, if you trade in this fashion, you often will not be a profitable trader, especially in a more speculative market, which we happen to be in. Now, one thing I like to look for, for decent ideas for shorts, is if you have a stock that you know is starting to get a bit extended, you're essentially looking for cracks in the armor. And one of the simplest things you can do is start to look at lower time frames. You know that the daily is in an uptrend. You know that the daily has been gapping higher and higher. And all you need to do is look for a lower time frame trend to finally be broken. Something like an hourly uptrend, finally printing maybe that lower high, which of course is happening in pre-market and that lower low which in this case is happening quite precipitously because of how many people are sitting on massive gains in the stock. Additionally, all I have to look at for some key levels 
are things like previous day close. Now, while this platform doesn't necessarily have it marked, when I go ahead and mark that level, you can see how clear this level has been in pre-market. We've been bouncing and reacting off of it, making lower lows, basically running out of that top side momentum. And the moment we break it is the moment when the selling pressure really comes in. Essentially, it dictates the market trying to pivot. And that pivot nature of the market often occurs in one or two ways. We either start to consolidate, and if the market isn't too overextended, then that consolidation can be a bit timid, doesn't necessarily even have to be a short opportunity, as maybe more patient bulls are waiting for higher time frame pullbacks to get back in and basically lead the market to new highs or lows, respectively. But when it comes to intraday trading, you have a, a stock or a market that is this extended. You're often waiting for this first crack, this first sort of break in the armor. And this can lead to some really excellent trades, both intraday and even possibly swing ideas, depending on how they establish throughout the next session. Another thing to kind of note, Rivian is a very volatile stock. So it can be a bit challenging to go out there and necessarily outright short shares on Rivian. If you're even considering doing that. But Yesterday, we had options open up on Rivian. So if you are an options trader, and if you like the idea of making sort of that counter trend bet against some of the um, overblown momentum in this stock, then you can come to the option market. Probably don't wanna be looking at a two day series. That's probably not enough time and the implied volatility is quite high, but something like a 17 December giving you approximately 30 days for your thesis to be correct and ultimately playing this with something like spreads. That way your IV exposure is not too significant to your directional position. Now, I bring up Rivian's chart because everybody in the chat was noting how significant this pullback was, but it's not just Rivian. A lot of stocks sort of follow the leader. And as long as there's a lead bull, the marketplace is content. It's content with moving higher in different stocks, different names. All I have to do now is look at another lead bull, LCID, Lucid. And you can see that there were some short-term sort of topping behavior in the stock. Not necessarily breaking down from previous day close. That's way down here. That's not a level in play until we get there. But what's more interesting is both the double top that occurred and the fact that Rivian broke previous day close and Lucid started selling immediately following that event. Other names today, Go EV. Everybody was looking at this breakout, starting to sell. So keep in mind that the idea behind this sort of trading style and this market environment is that oftentimes there's going to be a bit of a follow the leader approach. Everybody's looking at maybe one or two lead bull or bear candidates. Everybody's kind of following the same animal throughout the momentum. That stock begins to consolidate or stall, new lead bull emerges, new sort of interesting stock to trade. Everybody kind of hops on that bandwagon and ultimately pushes that one higher. But whenever things start to crack, or just start to at least profit take in the short term. Understand that volatility to the downside is significant. We're not really putting up good structure on momentum plays. And when you have a lack of structure, what you often have is a willingness to break support zones quickly and often to break support zones permanently, i.e. leading to blow off tops. Uh, no one necessarily is holding these for longer term periods. People understand that these momentum plays are often going to be one and done type trades. And as you come down through previous ranges, the buying interest there tends to be a bit timid or lackluster. That doesn't mean necessarily that there's going to be some, uh, there isn't necessarily going to be some wild bounces today. But just keep in mind that if you're trading one of these stocks, it might be worthwhile to keep multiple charts up because they're not necessarily independent. 
All I have to do is look at Lucid and look at Rivian to understand that high correlation that we have and basically understand that as we get to critical levels in one stock and the reaction from it, it can perpetuate itself into other key names. So with that said, hopefully that didn't give anything too, uh, too scary for y'all in today's trading session, but an opportunity is an opportunity. Whether you're long biased or short biased, this is the market that we're in. So trade safe, stay tuned for pre-market prep. And tomorrow, stay tuned for a bit more discussion on the bond yield flattening and steepening concepts and how that affects the overall equities market. So we'll talk more tomorrow and stay green. All right. Good morning. Good morning, Andrew. How you doing? Can you hear us? All right. Excellent. Hold on. We can't Thanks hear you. Coming. I'll be here. Yeah. I'm looking at. Uh, I'm looking at. Uh, you watch this to see if you can trade. Thanks. All right. Excellent. Uh, good morning, Peter. How are you doing today? Good morning, Carlos and Andrew. I'm doing great. Thank you. How are you, Carlos? Doing good. Doing good. Um, all right, guys, let's get to it. Let's look at the stuff we had uh, yesterday on our list, starting with KZR. And let's bring our five minute here. Uh, let's zoom in here to the action yesterday. Uh, again, great pre-market activity yesterday on this one, guys. We we knew that at the open, this is one that might have uh, had a chance of not trading well. And uh, it was a short the entire day, but it was a tough one. Again, the price action was not really clean. There were better trading opportunities. Uh, but we did love the pop on this one yesterday and again just uh, you can see the action there was not all clean even looking at it now uh, uh, after the fact so um, you can see here how choppy uh, it was there here's lucid guys man <laughs> today <laughs> peter have you looked at lucid 18 million shares traded so far i, I mean wow as, all right as um as jared was just saying ev mania is truly upon us and it, it continues this morning with volumes like this pre-market like you know, like Rivian's got almost five or over four million. Uh, right. You even have like little companies like GoEV. We'll talk about later. That's that's moving with eight, almost nine million shares. Like it, it's nuts.
it, it's it's madness. Uh, but yesterday, Lucid guys, we had a great pre-market activity. We knew this one could be very explosive, and it was just that at the market open, you had a lot of tickers that sold off. You know, this was the norm. This I saw a lot of stuff selling off, and then eventually settled down. Uh, that first initial five minutes. This one settled down nicely, comes up above the VWAP, and then it's, it's see you here. I mean, this thing just takes off it right here, struggles a little bit within this 49.52. But one thing I like here is you're getting higher lows, right? Higher lows, squeezing into that point. Volume comes in, look at the pop there, and then just takes off. Never really looks back. You have another st stalling a little bit around 50.96. Uh, that was the high of the pre-market that we had on our on our on our list on our charts yesterday and then from there it just continues to just just uh just crush it so insane today they're up 3.6 definitely in play 18 million we'll take a look at that uh in a second ggpi again this was this initial sell-off we saw in early on in a lot of stocks uh this one did not recover right away like for example like lucid and some of the other ones did uh this one kind of took a bit to get to get uh to, to come back to the green but again very choppy as well not the cleanest looking stock there uh mara on the other hand this one breaking out nicely from the pre-market highs we had this 52.97 here you can see early on just took off here did give you a beautiful pull back here to this level and then another run uh, for our second leg here a second move up to uh towards some highs here 56 so uh bitcoin has been very active guys we know they've been taking a bit of a hit there uh the last couple of days pretty much flat today don't see a lot going on there i think evs for the action is this morning here's any any was just pure trash guys i mean this is a definition of a stock that was choppy did not know what to do price action was horrible uh, again just not a whole lot going on here we had rivian as we mentioned on deck this was not a, as clean as lucid as you can see here they had volume but again nowhere near what lucid and this is the reason why i had them uh, on the secondary list here uh amd yesterday uh, peter this thing continues to trade very well i mean the pre-market action uh continues to be very bad but at the open you're getting some pretty good moves throughout the day so uh, that continues to be the case there for for AMD. I know you watch this one closely. Uh, I didn't yeah. Look at it. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I was going to say AMD and uh, Nvidia, which has earnings, I think tonight, uh, continue to sort of lead this sector. The rest of the sector is fairly sluggish. But you're right, AMD, like like you said, do doesn't do a lot pre market. Uh, Nvidia as well, but both have been trading fantastic during the day. You just have to wait for the right opportunity. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Nvidia not as clean yesterday as AMD, but they've both been uh, very, very active. All right, guys, we have a lot to go through today. If we look at our gappers list this morning, I mean, we're filled on both sides, red and the green side, uh, gapping up and down. So we'll get through some of these this morning. Obviously, EV uh, being the big talk uh, this morning, as you can see. But before we do that, uh, Peter, let's get to the market post. What do we have this morning? Yeah, so well, uh, let's start with home builders. So we do have, and and as Carlos has mentioned, unfortunately, Norm normally updates it, so ignore what's on the screen. Uh, we did have a home builders index, which was released yesterday, slightly higher, which shows a continued increase and in positive outlook on uh, home sales and the construction industry. Um, we just had building permits and housing starts. Um, but which were pretty much at expectations. Building permits slightly higher, housing starts slightly lower than expected, but the overall uh, sentiment is generally bullish in that sector. Later on today, we're gonna have a, a couple of speeches from different Fed presidents, but they're sort of the regional presidents, so that doesn't normally have much of an impact on the market, despite the fact that there's, I think, I don't know, five of them talking at different points today. So um, overall, like uh, Jared was talking about, we are testing all time highs here on the SPY. And you know what? I mean, we have nothing uh, to, to, you know, we, we just have to expect that the market is going to continue to give us trading opportunity, whether it goes up or it stalls here. Um, you know, we're, we're certainly seeing a lot of bullish sentiment. So be cautious out there when, uh, you know, if you're looking for swing trades, especially and expecting this market to continue, that's a reasonable expectation. But I mean, it is frothy up here. That's a term people like to use just to say at any moment, you know, nobody's going to say they're super surprised if the market was to dump a lot. Now, we haven't seen it yet, but but who knows? So for today, though, we've got some things that are moving. And so let's uh, let's get into that because we're still having a lot of earnings out there. Oh, yes, yes, we do. Um, and I agree with you, Peter, there. I mean, just 
two weeks ago, it was the end of the world in this pool back down here. Now we're <laughs> right. now we're at all time highs. <laughs> um, right. Well, that's what happens, right? We get this pullback. And was, everybody's like, I knew it. I told you so. Right. This is it. Right, we're we're right. seeing the big drop. And then the market recovers like we like to joke, right? They, they mm -hmm. fired up mm -hmm. the printers again and the printing presses were, were going to print money and, and buy new stocks and, and things go right back up. So yeah. you know what? Yeah. I mean, it is really tough to predict what this market is going to do. So uh, that's why I'm so happy to day trade. That way I can just take it day by day and react to what the, uh, what the market tells me on every, every given hour. Absolutely. Guys, let's clean up our list from yesterday. Oh, I did that. Uh the old way but that's okay we'll make some spaces create some rows here and let's look at our watch list starting with pr prog this is one that's been on our list quite a bit i do not like the way this thing trades it, it seems a little bit choppy for me uh the price action overall it's just not clean they have great volume today 17 million shares traded i don't really like the daily good day yesterday as far as the daily here right going from four to five dollars uh but let's take a look at the actual action on here uh again i'm just not a big fan of this one guys so yeah. they had earnings last week um mm -hmm. the the you know the news was saying that this was a short squeeze that was causing this thing to jump up like this so yeah. uh normally i don't see reporting on short squeezes so that was interesting to me um they must have had a, a much bigger short float than i saw being reported um uh, this morning because their short flow was at 17%, but that's not at an extreme level. Uh, mm -hmm. So you know what? You know, with short squeezes, they can sort of end as abruptly as they started. So like you said, Carlos, hasn't really been a great trader, but, you know, I'm going to keep it sort of way off to the side in case it uh, in case it takes off. Yep, absolutely. I got it here as a secondary for now. Again, the volume is there and it is up 21% worth taking a second look at. Here is Go EV this morning. Again, big day yesterday. Another big morning so far, up 16%, 9 million shares traded. Um, that is going to go on our, our, our main list here. Again, I'm, I, I prefer Lucid. I think that is the uh, cleanest one. And talking about Lucid this morning, guys, this thing is uh, has traded 19 million shares so far. Uh, this morning up 3.94% right there. Uh, and you can see the action this morning is very, very uh, extreme. So all the way up to 61, 62, basically down to 56, getting a bounce now uh, from 56. We're hanging around 58 at the moment. So again, just very, some very big moves here happening with Lucid. Their daily uh, is just incredible. Look at this breakout uh, yesterday, just insane. So uh, on our list for sure, guys, uh, uh, this thing is just on fire. Um, now, Go well, EV did have some yeah. news. Uh, they did have earnings, uh, but the bigger news seems to be that they've accelerated their production plans. I love these. I love these companies because Go EV, uh, the company's name is actually Canoe. This is act, sort of more like a SPAC, actually, that they're trading under. But um, you know, they got news that they were accelerating their production plans, so they haven't started production. But you know, it's it's jumping up. The price is almost doubling because they've accelerated their production plans for their funky looking vehicle. I, I posted a picture in the in the chat earlier. It's I don't know. It looks like the old Aztec that everybody hated. So uh, it seems a little weird. But you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if they've ever produced a car or if people think it's going to succeed or fail. Right now, you know, you just get a little bit of good news and and off you go. So it could be a great trader today. Yep, they got a, a short interest of right now of thirty percent. Um, again, that could change because that is going to be about two weeks behind on that number. And yesterday, I, I hope anyone that uh, that was stuck there was getting out because this thing looks like it wants to rip higher. All right, next we have MULN, 4.2 million shares float. Not looking good right now, guys. We need more volume for that type of float. Uh, let's skip on this one. Recent IPO as well. Again, not a whole lot to go by. So let's head on down to EYPT. This was on our list yesterday, and just I'm glad I took this off. Actually, just look at this Monday, I think. It was, was it on our list. Uh, was it Monday? Yeah. I, I thought oh, okay, could yeah, have been. It, was. it is Wednesday. Yeah, it could yeah. have been Monday. Um, again, I just this is just not the, typically the type of stock that we like to trade. So I'm just gonna avoid this one here, guys. Um, it's just nasty. The pre market is not looking great neither. Heading on down to ZIM this morning, they are up seven point eight, five hundred thirty-seven thousand. Uh, their daily what company is this their daily seems a little bit light on on a uh, on volume for the most part on average they're doing about what is that 3.53 million shares so they don't get a whole lot of volume they're up 7.8 this morning uh 
I'm concerned with the spread here and just the overall flow of the price action. I'm, I'm not a fan of this one. I'm going to skip it unless there's any catalyst uh, that will make us want to keep this. I don't see I don't see anything good on the charts right now. Um, let's head down to BKKT this morning. Uh, this is a bucket, right? And uh, whatever it is. Uh, again, we, we had really good days early on, well, late last month, right? We had some really good days on here. After that, it really hasn't done much. I don't have no faith that this is going to trade well today. Uh, and even so, I believe we're going to find other stuff that's going to be a lot better than this one. T TJ Max here, they are up 6.4. I know Jerry was talking about some of the retail uh, companies reporting, right? So TJ Maxx here up 6.4, 362,000. That's a big pop for them. They do not trade very well, guys. We've seen this one before. Uh, uh, it is not a great intraday trading stock for the way we trade. I'll put it on here as a possible. We'll come back and take a second look there. Uh, next we have um, in here, this was coming up, this 5 million, uh, 5.9 million shares float, VRAR, uh, but that looks pretty bad there, guys. Pretty bad. Yeah. So we'll, we'll skip on that. Uh, what does uh, Norm say? Garbage. Yeah, garbage. Pure garbage on that one. Um, we'll, we hope Norman's feeling better. Um, I know he's still a little bit <laughs> under the weather there, and I uh, hope he's doing a lot better today. SBLK no good guys and we'll stop here because not a whole lot looking great on the gap up list we did have lucid Just here one. We, yeah yeah uh one one that is on their lows uh not a lot of volume but they had earnings today and they they beat their uh their earnings numbers so it, it's uh it's one that you know like sometimes we watch i like to watch it but uh pre-market it doesn't normally do much it's a nice stock which means mm -hmm. you usually have to wait for the bell okay Gotcha. We'll, we'll put low on here, lows, and, and see what happens there. Okay, guys, let's take a look at what's gapping down today. AVIR, this thing, wow, I remember this. This had the, the nice pop with uh, that other company, uh, I forgot, MR, MRK. They both popped up together, uh, and I remember this because we had some really good trading here. And then from there, it hasn't really done much. And then a few weeks later, if you guys remember, this thing dropped to 12 bucks. Uh, on a, on a FDA uh, that did something did not get approved. I forgot the exact catalyst, but this was a huge drop. Yeah. This morning they're down fourteen percent. I mean, there's been so much technical damage done to this thing. I don't know how good it's actually going to trade. Um, uh, they're down fourteen percent. Not a great pre market activity right now. This thing is just. Can you imagine being here, uh, sitting at a thirty two, a forty on a long term entry, and now you're at nine seventy four? I mean, that that is scary stuff. Um, we have no signs of, of, a, of a recovery anytime soon. So I'm going to skip on it, guys. Again, the numbers as far as gapping down look great, but I don't think it's a really uh, anything that's it, really in play. It is a news-driven drop. Um, they, you know, this is a reaction to the fact that the, the, they were involved in a competitive pill to Pfizer's uh, oral COVID pill um, that has been pulled. So, you know, once again, it's something that they were looking to go to market with is not going to make it. And that's what's causing the stock to drop. So there could be continued weakness, but you're right. I don't like the look of it. Yeah, I, I don't either. Heading on down, we have ARVL this morning. They're down 13 percent, 475,000. Um, not liking the activity on this one. Pre-market doesn't look great. The daily also looks funky. We'll skip on it for now uh, unless you have any catalyst that's worth watching this one. I don't see anything great on it at the moment. Uh, nope. All right. Nope. Good. We'll move. STNE. STNE. We had this before. I could tell because we had levels on here. Uh, they're down 11%, 176,000. Uh, it could be okay. Let's come back to it. I don't think it's great. Could be okay. We'll come back to that one. Rivian, obviously, definitely in play, guys. Mm -hmm. Be careful with That's this fine. one. <laughs> we know this can move very wild, um, but we cannot deny the fact, you know, they got 4.7 million shares being traded right now. We do have shares for sure. And they're down 8% after a nice run. I mean, this 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 IPO has done very, very well, either on hype or whatever the case may be. They're doing pretty good here. Uh, they're down 8.4. I mean, <laughs> just look, let me just remind you guys of the range here, right? Uh, our high of our pre-market is sitting around 180-ish or so. And we're down at 156 this morning alone. So what that means is if you are going to be trading this, you got to be extremely careful. You got to have amazing risk management. And you also need to make sure you're taking a small size on this thing, right? Definitely in play, guys. But again, I can't stress enough how careful you have to be on this one. You know what? Actually, we're going to move this down to our risky pile. Let's just make sure that we have it here next to our risky low flow stock because this one, it is extremely, extremely risky, guys. Be very careful. 
Um, NNOX this morning, not looking good. Pre-market is a little sloppy here, so we'll skip on down to BLDP. Uh, oh, no good. No, this is pretty bad there. NNOX, no good. IQ, wow. Did you skip? Did I skip you one? skipped over Target? Oh, yes, I did. Target is a lot of retailers in play, as, as uh, Jared mentioned earlier. Target, I assume earnings, because we never see this on our list unless there's earnings. Um, exactly. Right? It is earnings. Uh, oddly, you know, like, like we're seeing a lot recently, it looks to me like they beat their numbers, but uh, they're, they're getting punished for it. So that, that has happened quite a bit. Um, and they their outlook, they actually increased their outlook saying they're expecting a positive holiday season. So, you know, why it's down, I don't know, but retail is a mystery to me. I, I can't seem to trade retail stocks very well. Yeah, th this is not a, a great trade. We'll keep it here because it is definitely in play. And it's funny, that does happen a lot. You know, you get good earnings, but you, you sell down. That happened to Walmart as well. Uh, we saw a sell down in the pre-market. Uh, all right, let's stop here, guys, because we have, oh, you know what? I want to take a look at Piton. I want to take a look at Pizza because I know they've been making a little bit of noise here. Uh, not great so far. All right, Peter, anything you like what? this morning? Yeah, well, you already mentioned AMD, which I'm always just keeping an eye on. I think with uh, earnings coming up for NVIDIA, that may cause a little bit of, you know, sort of sympathy-based catalyst on AMD. It's also been, of course, testing all-time highs, so you mm -hmm. never know. Yesterday's move was fantastic. Yes, um, yes. But in specific news, Visa is one that may be interesting to watch. V is the symbol on that. Um, Visa had some news. Amazon has a, a shot, you know, I guess a, a, sent a shot across their bow saying that their fees were too high in, in the UK and they're refusing to accept Visa card, UK based Visa cards on Amazon. So that was some interesting news that, you know, Amazon's flexing their muscles. You know, normally you don't get to challenge the credit card companies, um, you know, because you need the methods of payment if you want to sell. But they're big enough to say, you know what, you're not going to lower your fees for us. We're cutting you off the platform. So similar move, if you remember, Costco did earlier when they weren't getting the deal they wanted and changed credit card um, companies, which, yeah. you know, was yeah. a big deal. So. We'll see what happens. Visa, you know, it's a it can trade tough, but it's interesting news to me. So I'll just be keeping an eye on it. Yeah, that that is, I'm sure, a, a nice chunk of their business. Um, yeah, let's watch, let's see what happens there on Visa down three point two, and this right here, guys, three hundred thirty nine thousand. That is an amazing volume for Visa because they normally do not trade heavy volume on any given day. Uh, so pre market is pretty good uh, for them. So let's keep an eye on that. Okay, um, let's take it to the chat room, guys. What else do we have here? Starting with uh, Jason, we'll start with you. You're giving us Neo. Let's take a look at that. Neo here. What do we got going on? 782,000 right now. Daily is messy on Neo. Has not been pretty clean the last couple of weeks. Uh, pre market is very active in the green early on now, hanging out in the red. Um, I like where the volume is right now. I like that this, uh, this range we're getting, you know, going from, from green to red. So that is good. Maybe losing this. This is a key level for them right here. This previous day close line. You can see a lot of resistance happening here. A lot of support happening there. So that that could be interesting. Um, we'll put it here. I want to say a possible because um, there's a whole lot going on today. But we'll see what, what Neo does here. Uh, and then we'll look at plug. Uh, Jason's giving us plug as well. Let's take a look here. Plug this morning. Uh, I, I love the daily unplug. I, it's, it's just how difficult sometimes the stock can be to get a nice run and a nice continuation. Uh, but I do like this daily. 463,000. We're up 1.5. Their volume is a little bit lighter in the pre-market this morning. But, you know, that doesn't mean a whole lot for plug because we've seen it trade a, a light pre-market action do very well and vice versa. So uh, we'll see. I'll put it on here for now. I definitely like this daily for a possible breakout. Let's see if that can uh, can get going. So thank you, Jason, for those two. Sandy Feet, Zim. We did look at Zim, and I am on the fence on this one with the volume we're getting here, right? It's a stock that doesn't uh, trade a whole lot of volume, and their daily candles are just a little bit funky. I do like the pop, 7.5, 553,000. You know, we'll, we'll take a second look at it, but I'm not, I'm not seeing anything great on it right now. Hopefully that can change. Um, all right, heading down, who do we have? Uh, let's see here. NCLH, I see a couple of you guys throwing that ticker out. Let's take a look at what's happening there. NCLH, uh, I know they had news yesterday, right? Uh, I forgot what it was, but they had a catalyst yesterday, and actually that played out pretty nice here, as you can see. And this morning, they're down again slightly after being green. So this is interesting. They, they lost this level here. They gapped down. They lost this level here as well in the intraday action yesterday. I mean, they're they're not looking good the last couple of days. They've been 
taking a very nice hit mm -hmm. here. Um, yeah. Yesterday, it looks like they announced a secondary offering, so that could be why yeah. they were uh, moving down. Yeah. So, it, 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 and it's funny because we did mention out of out of this secondary offerings, usually stocks don't trade very well, but NCLAs will be one to actually trade a little bit decent, uh, just because the sheer volume that they normally uh, normally get. All right, uh, heading down here, we have plug CCL. We uh, let's look at CCL from Dennis plug. We already looked at. Uh, I don't see a lot going on with with CCL. Same thing, just very weak over the last couple of days. Don't see a whole lot going on in the pre market. I have NCLH here. If that one is uh, uh, pushing low, we can look at CCL for uh, uh, maybe a sympathy move there. Here's Roku. They're down 3.4, 220,000. Uh, and possibly losing a nice level here over at 270. Now, you guys know I like the way Roku trades. Um, I know their pre-market at times does, does not look great, uh, but they can have some good intraday trading. So I'm going to keep them on here. Joel, you're giving us PayPal today. Let's take a look at that one. Great pre-market action on PayPal, guys. I do like what I'm seeing here. Uh, a nice drop and in, in possible uh, possibly losing some of these levels here. Uh, down 2.4 394 for paypal it's actually pretty decent volume uh peter do we have any news on paypal i know they have not been having fun the last couple of uh, oh november look at november guys november overall look at the increase in volume you're getting here and that is very noticeable in the way the stock is trading obviously look at the, the candles how wide they are and the the the, the, the downtrend you are in uh, what's the news on this today they seem to yeah, no, no specific news that I can see really on PayPal. The whole industry has been a little bit under pressure. Not, not under pressure. There's been increased competition mm -hmm. uh, in the space, uh, and and obviously the advent of uh, of uh, Bitcoin and and cryptocurrencies has got them sort of scrambling to to adjust their business models. Um, but I don't like. I don't really see anything specific that's driving this. They, I keep seeing articles where they're like, "Well, maybe this is the bottom, right? It's time to mm -hmm. get back into." To Square and PayPal, and, but as we were seeing, right, that that seems to be a little overhyped because neither one has really moved upwards too much yet. But it does look like they're both bottoming. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, yeah. On no. uh, on YouTube, yeah. uh, uh, Falcon uh, Five Hundred Nine had mentioned uh, Walmart and Macy's. Walmart was in play yesterday. I don't see much out of it today, uh, but it prompted me to look at Macy's. Um, you know what? It, Macy's amazes me because uh, I have I used to trade that during earnings. I haven't in the last little while. But look at the daily on on Macy's. M is the ticker symbol there. There, and it's just. Who would have thought, like at this time last year, it was trading six bucks. It's now sitting at thirty-two dollars. Who would have thought that you could get a you know five hundred percent return on Macy's department stores? Yeah, <laughs> like if you just want to understand how you know frothy, using the term mm -hmm. I used earlier, their market is. To me, Macy's is just a great example of that. Yeah, I, I agree a hundred percent. Um, typically not a great trader, but they can deny their daily has been amazing. Guys, I added PayPal here. I really like their pre-market action this morning. I think this is going to be a good one. I saw a couple of people saying downgrade. Uh, they got a downgrade or something, so I'm not sure what, what's up okay. there. But uh, we will we will keep that on deck. Again, something's up. It, it is definitely in play. Oh, it has yeah. great volume uh, and, and down 2.2. Uh, on here as well. Keep in so, mind, this is see, but the, these are, I don't pay a lot of attention to these, Carlos, but yes, people are right. Uh, so Bernstein downgraded PayPal holdings to market perform and they lowered their price to $220. So mm -hmm, this is mm -hmm. why I ignore them. What's the current price? 210. So they downgraded it, but their target price is still above the current price. Like, talk about, anyways, <laughs> don't get me going on analysts. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, guys, uh, let's stop here. Let's take a couple from YouTube uh, and then we'll head over to our community announcements and event events here. M-U-L-N. Yeah, we looked at that one. Did not look great. So we're, we're not going to put that one on our list. Again, just recent IPO. Uh, and I also believe it's a low flow, right? This is Yes, yeah, a 4.2 million shares flow. That's what I'm getting on trade ideas. Guys, for that type of flow, you already know what kind of acts we want to see. And this is not it, right? We want to see some real good volume, some really good movement. Uh, we're not seeing that for this type of flow. So we're going to skip on that one. Uh, X, XLRN. Uh, no, 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 no. Looks like a buyout. No, no, this is not not a good one uh, for the way we want to uh, trade. So now MTTR. MTTR. Uh, too light on volume, guys. I think today we have stuff that looks better than this on our list. So I'm going to skip on that one. 
uh, at the moment. MUL we looked at. NR, NRDY. No, 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 no good. Cube, cube. <laughs> no, Let's go no, to no, cube. No, no, no. no, no. Let's go to cube. Cube. Yeah, we're we're fishing here. This is not great neither. Again, if I and I'm comparing these to what we have. Right, look at Go EV. Yeah. Look at Lucid. I guys. think we've I mean, got enough. Yeah, look at Plug. Look at uh, Roku. <laughs> look at PayPal. We have a very good list this morning, and even some of our possibles here, like Neos, are looking great. Um, so we'll do just two more here from BB from uh, the community from the YouTube community. Uh, we'll do GGIP. Uh, GGIP. You know what? This this is, could be okay if you like to trade this type of this type of stock. You can do very well with it. I don't like this one as much, so I'm going to skip on it, guys. Uh, I think it will be a little so funky at times. Yeah, yeah, just a reminder, this is part of the EV sector. It was in play yesterday. Um, so, yeah, yeah it's just yeah. caught up in the excitement. Exactly. If you're going to trade something, if not that you have to do this, but go EV and lose it right now. I mean, how clean can you get? They have the volume. They they're have a great daily right now. Uh, that's the ones you want to go with. Just be careful with these other ones that are getting caught in the excitement but not really trading uh, all that well and then last but not least let's look at Mavra and Bitcoin I know they've been getting just killed the last uh, couple of days here a little bit of a bounce up 1.1 I just don't see a whole lot of volume in action this morning but just keep an eye on the whole BTC situation there because that can change very good BTBT out of all of them is probably the worst trading one um, I prefer Mavra you could even look at Riot if you want to get into that space um, again let, let's see what happens in, in the next couple of days I think there'll be some good action out of those but I just don't see it uh, right now. All right, guys, with that said, let's go over to our community events and announcements and we'll come back and fine tune this list. Okay, well, um, I want to thank uh, Eamon for his presentation uh, earlier this week on uh, his uh, how to trend trade. That was yesterday. No, yeah, yesterday. Was it yesterday? That was. Oh my goodness, I'm, I'm so lost. We got so much going on here. I, 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 uh, I forgot. So that was yesterday. Hopefully that should be posted soon. Um, and Carlos, we don't have, uh, well, we have something coming up next week offhand. I don't know what it is. Yes, we do. Um, I have to check the, the, the website. We do have something coming up next week as well. Yeah. So guys, every week we always have a, a slate of uh, webinars and activity that's coming up. All you have to do is go to our website, bearabletraders.com, check under the webinars tab. And for instance, I'm doing that right now. And, and um, I can tell you that uh, next week uh, we're going to have... Um, you know, I think next, is next week is next week is might be Thanksgiving. What does next week fall under? Yeah. So no webinar for next okay. week, the 23rd. Right, we're falling okay. to that Thanksgiving holiday. That's correct. That's correct. No success webinar next week, guys. Okay. Well, there. That's why we don't have one listed there. So good. To, good to know. Excellent. Okay. Well, then. So um, then that's the Tuesday sessions, which are always the strategy, and then we move to psychology on Wednesdays. So that makes today a psychology day. And tonight we're going to be having Nada talking to us at 8 o'clock on mindfulness. She does a series on mindfulness, and it's a good reminder of how much it can benefit your trading. And, and frankly, just sort of your, your ability to effectively function overall. So if you've never practiced mindfulness, I strongly recommend it. And, uh, you know, attending Nada's webinar is a great place to start. Uh, next week we are going to have Kreta, who's talking to us um, about taking the pain out of trading. Gosh, I mean, how could you not like that? topic. So um, that'll be on November the 24th at an earlier time this week. So tonight's is at eight o'clock again in our webinar room. Um, we have a, another event happening tonight. So uh, this is in partnership with the Wall Street Global Trading Academy. Uh, you may recall that uh, we had a couple of our members, including Thor, uh, Carlos himself, and then Andrew, that had a chance to go visit the floor of the New York Stock Exchange on invite from the Einstein of Wall Street. Um, and this is, uh, that was Peter who invited them out there. Not me, Peter, but Peter Tuckman, who uh, has been a market maker with the New York Stock Exchange since the 1980s. He knows his stuff. And for him to survive and prosper over so long shows that he, you know, is very adaptable and, and very effective. So he is going to be leading a webinar with David Green um, jointly with uh, sponsored by BBT uh, at seven o'clock tonight. So register using the link that you see on the screen. If you're in the room, we'll uh, post that up in the alerts and we'd like as many people as possible to register and take advantage. I expect that to be fantastic. So hopefully you're able to attend that this evening. 
And it's free, by the way, completely free. So to everybody, just join. Um, we are always proud of being able to support the communities in which we work and trade. Uh, this month, we'll be supporting the uh, Alzheimer's Research Foundation. So all donations, all super chats that we get for the month of November, um, we're, we'll be going to Alzheimer's and we will double it. We will match any contribution. So be generous. Please uh, go and uh, uh, if you make a super chat donation through the YouTube channel, uh, channel link using the pre-market um, show. We would love to see it and uh, we will match that donation. So thank you for them. Um, as we've been mentioning, go see our stock trading simulator. Another free thing that we're providing. You know, uh, Andrew has spent uh, some time and money developing this. He really wanted to provide this functionality to the market at large. You do not have to subscribe. There's no like, you know, you don't have to register to get access to this. You, you literally enter that website and it pops up as you see on the screen and you can use it for free as much as you want, as long as you want. So please go give it a shot. We even put um, strategy recommendations and suggested watch lists and, and test exercises that we've put in there um, that Eamon and Simon are putting together. So go check it out. Um, it give you a good insight to some of like how we trade and what we're looking at. But you know, if you just want to test your own strategies, you know, sort of using regular speed, you can speed it up, you can slow it down. It's a fantastic resource. Go give it a shot. Um, we are also promoting our services, of course. So if you want to join us, if you like what you're hearing and you're on YouTube and you haven't joined Bearable Traders yet, give us a shot. We are confident in what we're delivering and we know it's a great service for a lot of people. However, not every chat room is for every person. So for a low price, you can, you can get in here for one week, use the code PREMARKET24, you'll get access to our chat room all day. You know, see if that's a place that will benefit your trading and you can thrive like so many of our members have. You also get access to our onboarding classes, which happen every single Monday. So if you register now, you'll get access to next Monday's class. Um, if you like it and you want to join, then you can use the code BLACK. Friday 45 to get a 45% discount off our elite annual membership. Not only that, but we're throwing in one month of simulator, DAS simulator, completely free. So you can try out the tool or the platform, um, you know, make sure that it's a platform for you. Now you do not have to use that platform to be a Bearables member. You can use any platform you want, but it's one that we recommend because we find it fast and effective. Um, give it a shot. So hopefully we'll see you here in the room soon. We also have to note that it's Wednesday, which means that ta-da, Kreta is again with us. Good morning, Kreta. Hi, Peter. How are you? I am fantastic. Look at that. Twice this week I'm here. Poor Norm, not feeling well, sick on his birthday, still feeling bad, but it gives me the opportunity to talk with you. So we hope he gets better. And what are you talking to us about today? Today is motivation, so a great topic for midweek, get you over the midweek slump if anyone's feeling that. So we're talking about motivation in your trading, for trading, and how it's natural for it to dip and then how you can actually um, build it and get it back on track if it has dipped. So um, I'm going to jump into it. So motivation in trading, like we say, it can take a knock when you have a run of losses or you know, things are going against you. It's natural that your motivation can dip a bit. And we know also that to be successful in trading, there's a lot of work that goes on around trading. So you're reviewing your trades, you're testing your strategy, you're doing all of that stuff, you're attending webinars to make sure that you can hit the performance that you want to hit. So it takes a lot of work and it's natural that motivation can dip sometimes. But if you're really clear on your trading why, that can help you to actually reconnect with your source of motivation for trading. And then I'm also going to talk about just a couple of quick tips that you can use to build your motivation back up. But let's talk about your trading why. So your trading why is basically the reason why you're trading, obviously, that speaks for itself. But if you sit down and think about this and do this as a kind of formal exercise where you actually give yourself some space and time to reflect on this, and maybe your reason for trading now is different to what it was when you set out. So of course, I can hear everybody thinking that, well, I'm trading to make money. 
but what it, is it that you want to actually use that money for? So is it that you want to buy a new house? Is it that you want to provide college education for your kids? Or is it a number of different things? So actually connecting with that why can help remind you, you know, what it is that you're putting the effort in for. But another part of that is to understand that there's actually a difference between the motivation that is for kind of extrinsic rewards, external rewards. So that would be the things that you would buy with the money. So the end result of your trading, so buying the house, buying the Ferrari, paying for the college education for your kids, that's all extrinsic motivation. Um, Another example of that would be something like if you were trading to, um, you know, look good in the eyes of other people, and that can be an aspect of it. There's no judgment on that, but that's an extrinsic type of motivation. And that's all really good to have. It's useful to know that they are reasons why you're trading, but it's even more effective in terms of helping you stay motivated. If you can connect with the intrinsic reasons why you trade and they're the more internal factors that things that are just for the joy of it. So let's say you have a passion for trading you love reading the charts and you feel a real sense of mastery when you get it right that would be an intrinsic reason for trading so if you want to actually turn this into a strategy that you can use to boost your motivation anytime it dips i'd suggest that you take a few minutes and sit down and actually think about both the intrinsic factors and reasons why you trade and the extrinsic factors and then you can actually crystallize that by creating a kind of um visual spread of that so maybe on a pinterest board or maybe it's just something you put together with photos or whatever it is but finding some visual way to reinforce the reasons why you trade and then putting that up somewhere where you're going to see it every day when you're trading and then that keeps you on the straight and narrow and it reminds you of why you're actually putting in all the effort but let's say that that's not enough so i'm definitely recommending you do that if you haven't already but if that's not enough and if you need a few other ways to actually boost your motivation when you're finding it's dipped. Then three quick tips for that. So the first one is when your motivation dips, just like we spoke about for confidence last week, the quickest way to get you back on track is to actually find uh, some sort of goal that helps you feel accomplished again. So make your goals really simple, bring it back to the simple things that you can do well and give yourself an experience of success. So if you can actually feel accomplished, that's going to boost your motivation right back up. The second tip then is also to connect with other traders and no better place to do that than the chat room or the pre-market show. So um, connecting with people who maybe have gone through the challenges that you're going through and maybe they can advise you on different ways that they um, overcame those challenges. So that's a great way to connect, especially if you're experiencing particular challenges in a specific area. But you might also want to connect in terms of having an accountability buddy. So maybe you pair up with someone and you share your trades, regardless of whether they go well or they don't go well, and you hold each other accountable. So that would be a good way to boost motivation. And then the third way to do it is to take the control of your trading and feel that sense of autonomy. And what I mean by that is try and pull yourself right back to your strategy and your method of trading and what works for you. So it's really useful to connect and hear ideas and, you know, see what other people are doing. But it's very important that you're able to also discern what of or which of that information is relevant to you and which is you know just extra that you don't need to actually pull into your own process so the more that you can be focused on what works for you how you trade and what your own strategy is um the more that you'll also boost your motivation sometimes we can get lost in listening to everything that's going on and not discerning which pieces are important for us so if you can do those three things so accomplishing something or seeing yourself accomplish something connecting with other traders and then also making sure that you're doing what works for you there are three quick tips to help you boost your motivation i'm on mute i gotta fix that Thank you, Krita. As always, it's it's great advice to take. And like I mentioned, you know, I'm still uh, leveraging all of your lessons. And uh, I know you're big on uh, affirmations, which I use every day. That's what helps me stay motivated and focused on what I'm trying to accomplish. So anyway, some great <laughs> advice. And guys, if you want to see more of Krita, she's got her own uh, uh, sort of list of um, uh, uh, 
videos, sorry, on our YouTube channel. Plus, she has uh, a, a series of videos that she posts on into the Bear Bulls Traders Education Center, uh, and, and she'll be doing one, I think, next week, Kreda, I was saying that you're going to be with us. So It might actually be the week after. I just need to check. Is it, Is it the week, week after? Thing, I think there may have been a schedule right. shift, but I'm going to double check that, so I don't want to say for okay. sure. Okay. It could be the week after then. All right. Either way, you're going to be with us in a few weeks. So thank you so much for being here in the mornings. And uh, thank you for the evening webinars. Have a great rest of your week. See you, Peter. You too. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Creta, for that. Guys, let's give her a big thumbs up over on YouTube. Uh, we appreciate her coming on every Monday and Wednesday morning, giving us that uh, great uh, information. Um, all right, guys, we are running out of time. It is 9.15. So what we're going to do here is, here's our watch list that I have. We have Go EV, Lucid, which continues to drop nicely here. Uh, this morning, we have Plug, Roku, and PayPal. So we won't have time to do levels this morning. So I will stay on YouTube for you guys who do levels. I'll show you guys the moderator's watch list. Um, you guys in the chat room, the members, you already have access to the moderator's watch list. So that's listed there for you. You can look at it in the announcements. Uh, and I'll be back in the chat in a second. But I want to hand it over to Andrew. I know he is trading live today. So is Brian. So I want them to get enough time to go over what they like this morning and uh, and how they're going to attack the markets uh, this morning. So uh, with that said, over members on YouTube, I'll see you guys in a bit. And I'm sorry, members on our chat room, I'll see you guys in a bit. And then uh, YouTube, stick around for a little bit. We'll go over some stuff here uh, for you guys. Great, everybody. Thanks for being with us. All right, excellent. So just turning, uh, you guys on YouTube, hold on a second, turning off the screen for the chat room, make sure they cannot hear us and we're not disturbing them. All right, very good. Okay, so we could take a little bit slower for YouTube so we guys can um, can see our levels good, here. So good morning, everybody. Oh, hold on, let me go ahead and turn I off hope Andrew. everyone is doing well. Uh, there we go, I turned off Andrew, make sure, we're, and I just wanna make sure I'm not streaming into the room, guys, one second. And looks like I am not. Okay, perfect. All right, friends over in YouTube, let's continue here. Let's go ahead and look at Go EV. It's a good one this morning. This is looking nice. Let's do some levels for that. We got high of the pre market sitting over at a 1360, taking a bit of a hit this morning, guys, all the way down to uh, almost 11 here, getting a little bit of a bounce. Love the pre market at 11, 12. Um, have we been up here before? Uh, yeah, we have, of course. Right here, we do have uh, 12, 13. Another level on the daily off of this above the hot pre-market highs. We do have uh, 1450 and we also have this one here, 1664. So again, this one, guys, the range right now, 10 million shares being traded. We are slamming down a little bit here as well as Lucid is. Uh, if you look at Lucid, also 25 million shares traded and just look at the drop we're getting here. Someone mentioned in the chat, you know, maybe some profit taking they were asking. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure there's some kind of profit taking uh, being done here. I mean, just think about this, guys. This thing was sitting at $25 just a month ago, you know, $25. Since then, we have ran up to $61 um, as the most recent high. So, yeah, I'm sure people sitting there are, are that, that are holding. Swing traders are have made a very nice penny. You're getting to an area of prior resistance where we collapsed from, right? If you guys remember this in uh, in February, so I'm sure uh, if, if I'm sitting here from any, anything below 30, I'm thinking this might be a good time to bail on this, right? That's just me personally. Yeah. Um, so there, There's I, always profit taking going on, but yeah, oh, yeah. to say that's, that's what's driving the move is like, we just, you, there's no way to know. You, you never know. You never know. Are there people taking profits? Yes, but we never know what's driving the move here. Um, right. It could just be one market maker, you know, deciding, hey, this is a good time exactly. to uh, to get out. So. So you got some resistance coming up here at 62, 62, guys, 64, 61. Towards the bottom right now, we're making a brand new low over at 53.91. And guys, be very, very careful on this one. It's moving quite a bit, very aggressively. Uh, so watch out for that. Um, there's some levels there. We'd also have another one right on here around 48. And you can mark down the opening from yesterday over at 50 bucks as well. Here is plug this morning. I like the daily unplug for a possible breakout. I think it looks very, very interesting. You got tons of resistance happening here. A little bit of support from the last two trading days. Uh, Pre-market action is not looking great, but I'm going to keep it here because I seen this not put in a great pre-market action and trade very well. And I really like the daily this morning. Love the pre-market here at 42.59. We'll slam level there. And I think you're pretty much all set. Let's get levels above this 42, which is the high of our pre-market. 
Uh, we're going to slam in here over around 4841. We'll throw a level there. And another one here at 52.97. So I think we got some pretty good levels uh, set for plug this morning. Again, really like the daily for a possible breakout. Now here is Roku, guys. Roku is uh, not looking so good at the moment. Down 4.3 to 290 right now, which is great volume for them. They're kind of just frozen right here at 264.50. So I'm going to throw a level there as well. That is your new low of your pre-market. Towards the top, you get highs and lows from the last two trading days here. You're, uh, I have the pre-market as well right at the previous day close. So you're pretty much set there. Um, I want to head back here and look at we have not been down here in quite some time. Um, last time we were here, we had actually a nice little bounce where we blown through that level. And now we're looking at levels back in 2020. So um, right over here, guys, we do have 254.90. Uh, and down here, another great daily level at 240. Again, I don't think we'll get there, but the way this is looking right now is not looking very strong at the moment. It would not shock me. Here's PayPal also taking a bit of a hit this morning, down 2.4. Great volume right now. 500,000 for PayPal is really, really good, guys. Um, highs and lows from the last two trading days sitting up here, which look pretty good. Towards the bottom, we do have uh, 201.47. A great level there and another daily level here daily level here of one 209 208 19 uh, as well so again that guys that is our watch list this morning um let's take a look at what our moderators are watching today i'm just going to bring that over and then we'll uh we'll call it a day here guys thank you so much on youtube for for being with us as i'm doing this hit that thumbs up over on youtube it does help us out a bunch so and we appreciate that very 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 much all right uh bringing over the moderators watch list and uh, we'll bring this right over here. There we go. So this is Andrew is uh, currently live right now. So he's going over the stuff that he likes this morning. There's Brian also live. Let's see if we can. can I, I probably can turn on. Uh, I probably cannot turn on their screen. I have it off. But either way, here's the moderators lineup, guys. What we're watching this morning. Uh, heading up, we do have Amen, a possible long, C-A-N, Apple, and Oxy, potential shorts. He's looking at F. Thor is looking at Lucid, uh, Rivian, Disney, and Piton. Uh, secondary list, Neo and AMD. Mike is looking at uh, Rivian, NVIDIA, and Coin. Dima, she is looking at uh, AMD, Lucid, Go EV. Wait, did I have AMD on my list? Yes, I did. I skipped AMD, guys. I do have AMD on my yeah. list. It's sure actually in the did. top. I, I did for sure. It's on the top of the list. So <laughs> it's on there. Add it to your list as well. Uh, John uh, is looking at uh, Rivian, Baidu, NVIDIA. Brian, already short uh, Lucid. He called this out at 914. Short Lucid at uh, 55.1. And then Brian uh, covering at 54. Very nice. Peter, I saw my POs for today. Looks like we got some action there. Are any of these... Yep. Uh, really hot that we need to be aware of or no just regular no 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 massive ipos so just the usual slate and who knows if they're going to be any fun or not gotcha uh, and then your list peter amd of course lucid go ev that's 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 all you need today these are, are very very good and then secondary target lows uh visa and nvidia i have a bunch of these as well on my list and then jab is looking at the ev ev mania as you can see, Lucid, Rivian, and GoEV, all oh, just on fire. Neo, Tesla, FSR, you can look at those. And then he's looking at PROG and up for a possible squeeze there. So, guys, thank you so much for joining the pre-market prep this morning over on YouTube. We appreciate it very, very much. Make sure you hit that thumbs up if you haven't done so already. And we will see you guys uh, tomorrow at uh, 8 a.m. So we start our Thursday. So trade safe, everyone. Take care. And we will see you um, uh, tomorrow. Yeah, thanks so much for joining us. Consider joining the uh, room so you can take advantage of our uh, uh, live chat room all day. And hopefully we'll see you back tomorrow. Take care, and, everybody. And Peter, look, AMD is starting to move, man. Starting to look real good already. <laughs> Getting You're ready for the market open. Time, you know, it's, it's, yep. it's when it starts to say, all right, time to wake up. Let's, let's feel out the market and see what we're going to do this morning. <laughs> Absolutely. Take care, guys. Have fun. All right. Later, everybody. Later, man.